Long Distance Control of Synapse Assembly by Target Derived NGO, a study from the laboratory of David Ginty, Johns Hopkins University, Howard Hughes Medical Institute. The lead authors are Nikhil Sharma, Christopher Dutman, and Anthony Harrington. Hello, I'm David Ginty, speaking to you from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. A fundamental goal of developmental neuroscience is to understand how newly born neurons are incorporated into circuits that control nervous system function and behavior. We address this issue by focusing on development of neurons and circuits in the mouse peripheral nervous system, with a particular focus in the present study on the development of synapses in the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. What are the signals that instruct the formation of synapses between axons of preganglionic sympathetic neurons, whose cell bodies are located in the spinal cord, and dendrites of postganglionic sympathetic neurons, whose cell bodies reside within sympathetic ganglia? In our study, we show that NGF, the prototypic target-derived growth factor, expressed and released by targets of postganglionic sympathetic neurons, provides the signal to initiate synapse formation. NGF accomplishes this through a retrograde, endosome-based signaling mechanism. We'll now walk you through the findings of our in vivo and in vitro experiments. At first, we wanted to see if NGF plays a role in synapse formation in vivo. In order to evaluate the role of target drive NGF on synapse development, we looked at NGF knockout mice and tested whether there was a change in synapse number by staining for various synaptic markers. Much to our surprise, NGF knockout mice showed a dramatic loss in both pre- and postsynaptic specializations, even though axonal contacts from the pre neurons are completely intact, as shown by Norofoma 200 staining. In order to examine the mechanisms underlying NGF-dependent synapse formation, we developed an in vitro culture system that recapitulates our in vivo observations. A culture system was used where cell bodies and their respective distal axons are compartmentalized. These so-called microfluidic chambers allow us to treat the distal axons of neurons separately from the cell bodies, and thus let us examine events dependent on retrograde signaling. Sympathetic neurons from the SCG of neonatal mice were grown for 12 days in microfluidic chambers with NGF present on the distal axon compartment. We can visualize PSDs and dendrites using the markers Maguk and MAP2 respectively. Consistent with our in vivo observations, the appearance of PSDs is dependent on NGF, as withdrawal of NGF causes PSDs to disassemble and subsequently reassemble after a three hour NGF re -addition. Our next goal was to determine where in relation to the site of PSD clustering, signaling endosomes reside. To do this, we employed the use of a flag tag track A knock-in mouse. In collaboration with Zeyu Chen and Francis Lee, the flag epitope was knocked into the track A locus just upstream of exon 1 so that the flag epitope would be positioned on the extreme end terminus of track A protein. We can exclusively visualize post-endocytic signaling endosomes by performing a flag antibody feeding assay on distal axons of sympathetic neurons isolated from these mice. Amazingly, we observe that the retrograde signaling endosome traffics not only to the cell body, as has been previously reported, but also to the dendrites. There is also good correlation between the timing of signaling endosomes and PSD cluster appearance in the dendrite after NGF treatment. There are an increasing number of examples demonstrating the functional outputs of track are antagonized by another neurotrophin signal coming from P75. Since this appears to be the case for cell survival and axon growth, we wanted to see if this also is true for synapse formation. Consistent with the notion that P75 would antagonize NGF track A mediated synapse formation, we observe an increase in both pre and postsynaptic specializations in SCGs from P75 null mice. We also observe an increase in PSD clusters in vitro at varying concentrations of NGF. Remarkably, even when P75 null neurons are deprived of NGF, PSD clusters are present at levels comparable to wild-type neurons treated with high amounts of NGF. Importantly, this appears to be a local effect of P75 signaling since we observe an increase in PSD clusters when a ligand for P75 is neutralized on the cell body but not distal axons. Taken together, these data set up a scenario whereby prior to signaling endosome arrival to the dendrite, P75 restricts the localization of PSD clusters. Once the target-derived signaling endosome arrives to the dendrite, this inhibition is relieved, and PSDs can be initiated. It's the balance between these functionally antagonistic pathways that ultimately determines the proper number of synapses. Finally, we suggest that the clustering of PSDs is an obligate step 
for the differentiation of presynaptic terminals. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, we're excited to see if this model described here for the sympathetic nervous system applies to the formation of your favorite synapses within the PNS and CNS. Cheers.